Hello everyone, Steven here. Thank you for joining me. So today I am going to show you Maui Ocean Center or the Aquarium of Hawaii. This is place, um, this is located in Ma'alea, uh, South Central Maui. It's about 10 minutes drive outside of Kahului. Very easy to find. Visit uh, MauiOceanCenter.com for more details. The admission is about $35 right now and this is as of December 2021. Um, there is, an, in addition to that, there is a parking fee and um, there are QR codes you can scan to enter um, and pay online in the parking lot so it's contactless. Um, you do need to make an appointment, you can't just wa walk in since um, it is crowd controlled and um, just make sure before you visit you go, on, go online and reserve your ticket and um, you come at the time at or around the time that you have reserved. Um, it is very... Um, how should I put it, it uncrowded or empty right now just because of the pandemic and um, also because um, I think right now in this season in December most people are out on the ocean watching whales so um, anyways back to the aquarium itself um, overall I would have to say this is my favorite aquarium altogether um, as far as a reef hobbyist if you're looking for uh, fresh water cold water, um, you know, like planet tanks, um, this aquarium does not have any of that. It is strictly reef aquarium. Um, reef and also almost all the animals in here are local from the Hawaiian waters. So if you're reef hobbyists, if you love the Hawaiian waters, if you, if you can't make it out to do snorkeling, this is almost like a snorkeling experience right here. Coming in, you'll see this big lagoon tank and this is our, your typical near shore Hawaiian landscape. Um, when you're surfing, you actually see a lot of this. So you do you do get to see it from above and also from the side. I'm just pointing out some of the cool fish here, including flounder and some red chorus wrasse. And in the background, you see a lot of the unicorn tanks. Um, they actually do get pretty big. And you will see in the next tank coming in, we'll go in and there is a little um, hand sanitizer if you do want to use it before you open the door it's uh, always good courtesy now entering into the first exhibition there's this big wall there are windows on both sides and you can see this is your Hawaiian reef edge um, I would say a lot of fish you see here with the exception of yellow tang cold tang and maybe orange shoulder tang Almost all the fish in here are not very suitable for your average home aquarium. Um, using the people standing in front of them as the scale, you can see that some of the fish here are just gigantic. Um, your Dusumera tang, the, uh, the selfing tin here, and they have some snappers, and then also your, I would say the signature fish in Hawaii is the unicorn tang here. Um, almost all of them um, can get well beyond two feet long and um, some of the fish you see here are that looks big they aren't even fully grown yet uh, like the, the selfing tank you see in front of us here it gets to the size of a huge plate and uh, it's still growing it's not even fully grown beautiful streamer on this uh, unicorn tank and um, moving on, you will actually see me um, interview the aquarium curator here in a, in a moment. And um, I just want to say that um, I apologize that you don't get to, to hear his voice because the audio is so bad inside the aquarium. There's a lot of echoing and then um, there's some noises. <laughs> Um, from the aquarium background, there's people talking, so I opted to just um, take out his voice and I will narrate over him. Um, long story short, I, I did not make an appointment to talk to Chris, by the way. Um, I just kind of run into him and he happens to be um, helping one of his uh, display, display um, person to remanage um, how to display a coral. And um, I bumped into Chris and we had a short interview. So coming up, you can see here, I'm actually putting in uh, kind of a, a speed so that you don't have to endure the entire process, but he's 
explaining to the diver how he envisioned this coral. As you can see, it's multi cap. They're very brittle. A lot of us know that. So it, I think it had just freshly broken up. Um, don't possibly from a fish swiping towards it. So the curator is here um, explaining his vision to the diver. And in a moment, the diver is going to go in and then. Um, you can see here's a diver, um, they use a rubber band to temporarily um, secure the coral, but then eventually they just use two-part epoxy, just like we do in our hobby, and um, they will secure the monkey cap onto the display here, and that's what this display is, it, it is a monkey cap coral display. And then here, um, Chris will be explaining um, the mission of the aquarium to us, and they're actually, um, it is uh, privately owned, it's not a public aquarium, it is owned by a corporate that actually has three other locations, one in Israel, I believe um, he said there's one in Spain, and um, there may be one in Middle East, I can't remember where now, but if you go online and look, it is there, and um, Chris is very knowledgeable, you know, he's the curator of this place. And uh, what I was really impressed by this place is how well they keep the coral and the tropical fish alive. A lot of the places that I go to, um, when I enter immediately, I can see some of the fish are being mistreated. Um, even large aquariums like the Chicago Shed Aquarium, they have a lot of funding, yet they still have a bunch of sick fish in there. But this place, I did not see any sick animal. Um, and the coral is growing very well. Um, obviously, you know, they have the open water coming from the ocean straight away, so that definitely helps. Um, well, this one, I would say in Monterey Bay, are probably two big aquariums that I have not seen sick animals. So really kudos to this place, especially being private. And I want to thank Chris for taking time for a short interview with me. Um, you know, if you're interested, please feel free to reach out to Chris. Um, I'm sure he would have some pointers to you. Um, on some of the um, some of the aquariums setups and what they keep and why they keep things the way they are, so very interesting. And they have a separate display for just about every different fish and coral group in here. So coming up, you will see that there is a display that is just about strictly for surgeon fish, smaller surgeon fish. Um, there is one dosimale in there but there isn't any unicorns, but then you can see a variety of tanks in this tank. Um, Hawaii, that, by the way, does not have any acrophoras. Um, there's a lot of porcelophoras, um, stylophora, and monopora, but no porcelophora. And this tank is a triggerfish display. There are three different kind, types of Hawaiian triggerfish, including the famous humuhumu, which is the state fish of Hawaii. And coming up, we have the rats display. There are 47 species of different rats in this tank. Um, but as we all know, rats do hide a lot. So uh, don't expect to see all 47 species when you're coming here. Um, you will see a lot of them darting in and out. Um, you probably want to just, you know, if you really want to see all of them, just wait till the feeding time. And right here, um, I actually speed up. Um, this is actually um, one of the workers here clean up siphoning up this tank just like we normally do this is a coral restoration tank so a frag tank basically like what we have fast forward to the outdoor display there is uh, i disagree with this but you know just about every aquarium have to have this for kids so they can touch it echinoderms uh i think it's torture for them but you know this is something that they want the kids to interact with and there is green sea turtle display by the way sea turtles are um, protected by international law so if you see them in the ocean which you will almost um, definitely do when you come to Hawaii do not attempt to approach and touch them uh, it is illegal to touch a sea turtle and then there is a shark tunnel and this is actually a bit of a longer video because I've slowed down the pace so I can shut up if you want me to, but there are some really cool fish here. There are some giant, um, giant, gi giant grouper. And then um, there are a few different species of shark in here. There's a sand shark, you, you probably just saw some black tip. 
what the most beautiful thing that I've seen in here is actually、um, a tiger shark.、Um, and here are some giant trevelies. There is a giant grouper, grouper in the bottom. It doesn't look that big、um, on the camera. I feel like the camera make it look skinnier than it really is. But trust me, it is fat. It's at least 200 pounds.、Um, there's a black tip that just swam over us, and.、Um, Well, the water is a little bit murky. I would say probably because there's plenty of nutrients in here.、Um, this tank does contain also a bunch of snappers. I am not sure if they're in here for food or they just like co-inhabit、um, with all the sharks. But this is a shark tank, and within this particular building, actually half of this building also、um, is a, is a mini museum for. Like the history of the Hawaiian culture,、um, especially the Maui Islands. So, back in you know like a few thousand years ago, when Maui was actually、um, one big island connected to Lanai and Molokai、uh, during the Ice Age when the seawater was lower. So this whole big thing was one big island. And Maui's most recent volcanic eruption was actually back in the 1600s. So it is a very, very young volcanic island. If you travel to the southeast portion of the island, you can still see the lava flow. Anyways, but then、um, the ancestors of today's Hawaiians has already been here since then. And believe it or not, Maui was actually once a capital、um, of the Hawaiian Islands, not Honolulu.、Um, the oldest capital. Uh, actually, for about thirty per thirty years period of time, is、uh, Lahaina in Hawaii. So the reason for that is because Lahaina has a strong economic background.、Um, Lahaina being a whale center, as we know that whale come to Hawaii to winterize. So back in the days, there's a lot of whalers in Hawaii. Unfortunately,、um, right now it's stopped. Um, they are protected, but back in the days, people do hunt whales, and they use all parts of whales to help with the local economy. So that's actually one major economy booster for Hawaii before it became a、um, before it is being replaced by agricultural, like sugarcane and pineapple, and then eventually tourism today. So we're about to exit this tunnel. And、um, next, I'm just going to show you a quick display. Here's a worker actually wiping down, cleaning up the display.、Um, you know, just like a regular cloth. So I think all the tanks here use、um, acrylic for their、um, tank walls. So、um, here is a squirrel fish、uh, display. And you know, feel free to pause the video at any time if you want to read some of the signs that I've captured.、Um, these are big eye squirrel fish. Um, they're not particularly reef safe because they do will、uh, eat shrimp. Oh, one thing, funny thing is that I do see there is、um, there's a a, a moray eel display in here, which I won't be included in the video. There's just so many tanks that、uh, some of them I have to skip. But they have、um, some shrimps in there, and they're not eating them. I thought flounders are very cute, so I included them here. And then,、um, lastly, I just want to show you,、um, you know, one of the most difficult fish to keep in captivity is the Moorish idol, and this place has a tank almost dedicated to it. Look at that group of Moorish idol up there; they look so happy. So,、um, I hope you enjoyed my video today, and I hope you take time to visit Maui Ocean Center when you have a chance to visit Hawaii. It is definitely worth your while. Very cool place,、um, beautiful coral reef display. So if you're a reef hobbyist, definitely come check it out. Please support my channel by like, comment, share, and、um, subscribing. Thank you so much.